Howdy! Biffler Bart here, and welcome. Feeling a little bit better. So, been kind of toying around with a few things here and there, and wanted to go ahead and do a, a full stream on it tonight. And I'll be breaking down this stuff into individual sections, and actually recording the videos and uploading them over the course of next week. So if you want to follow along, great. If not, you can wait till next week and yeah, watch them as they can come along. All right, so Polygon Heist. Now I've gone ahead and taken the time to retarget the character because, well, you've seen me do it a thousand times. And I've gone ahead and just toyed around with the, uh, the police car. Okay, and the heist map itself, uh, didn't really do any cleanup. The only thing I did was I opened up that door and that door and I fixed the collision here. Um, the collision on the metal detector was broken so I went into the actual static mesh editor and actually in, in, the, game, in, in the editor itself here and actually created a custom uh, collision for it. So if you were to be able to climb up, you actually have a full, regular mm, collision. Um, other than that, I just put a barricade wall around the outside just to prevent people from going over here and walking over and falling out of the world. So, fun little small map. Good stuff. And we're going to be this character. We don't have anything to shoot at just yet. We're not going to worry about that. Um, you see, I haven't even cleaned up the, um, the files here. Okay, so what I want to cover in this video is I'm going to create a pickup first off. Even though, technically speaking, if we're the FBI guy or gal, we are going to already be armed. We're here to stop a bank robbery. So we're already going to have a pistol, and that's all we're going to worry about in this video is getting a pistol. Um, no, they're not, but... Uh, if you were to turn on, let's see, the individual windows, unfortunately, you see they're they're doubled up. So if you were to break this one, that one will break also, unless you actually went into their asset, uh, their their actual assets, and separated the individual windows. Um, so that would be something you would have to do, and usually the plugin for Apex Destruction. Just go into plugins. Click on built-in Apex Destruction, enable that and restart, and then you'll be able to create destructible meshes out of those windows. And that's what I would do if I was going to actually make them destructible. So the reason why we're going to create a, a pickup item for the, the pistol is, okay, if we die, then we want the pistol to actually drop on the ground next to us. So, just to show that, there, there's going to be the pickup item, there's going to be an actual weapon item, there's going to be, um, I'm going to cover making the animation for the pistol. Uh, so when you fire the pistol, you actually see the slide move, um, and shell casing eject, and when you change your magazine, the shell casing, I mean the, the empty magazine will hit the floor. Um, may or may not get into actually making a magazine counter and all that kind of stuff like I've done before uh, in this video, but... Alright, so I'm going to go in here, and I've already created all my file structure and everything too. So my pickup folder, I'm going to go ahead and create a new pickup. And it's going to be a blueprint class, actor, and we're going to call this... Glock, actually, since we don't want to use real names, Grok. Um, PU, so that I know that this is the actual pickup. So we'll go into this and go back to, to Polygon Heist, Meshes, Weapons, because we have weapons and weapons rigged. Um, the weapons are going to be static meshes, which is going to be fine. So grab this, going to be the pistol SWAT, go back into the pickup, add, and it's already here as soon as we select static mesh. 
And I'm just going to put this as pistol. Compost and save. We're going to go ahead and rotate it 90 degrees so it's laying flat. It's going to be in the ground a little bit. You can see the, I don't know if you can tell the, the green line there. So we're going to raise Z up by three. No, it's too high. Two. Try Let's just leave it at two. So that way it's actually on the ground and not halfway in it. Compost, save. I'm going to go ahead and add another component of a box collision. And we don't need to worry about the name of it. You are an asshole. Thank you. And I'm just going to change the Z height to 0.5. And just kind of center it over the gun. That's good enough. Kapow. Save. So now we actually have a pickup so that if we walk back over it, we can have the functionality later to actually pick up the weapon. But right now, we don't need it. We just need it to, to be visible for now. Because technically, we're already, already going to have the pistol. Since we actually have um, weapon, I don't know how well I'm going to be able to show this, but this is the empty shell casing that will be coming from the pistol. So we're going to utilize that. We don't even need collisions for it or anything else. Um, we're going to use the holster, but I think there's one in Skeletal Mesh. We don't even need the holster because our character already has a holster on his hip. However, we're going to go ahead and create um, two sockets on the player. One for the holster location and one for the actual um, in hand. So I've already got animations as well. Character, animations, got a regular unarmed, and then we got our armed which is going to include my death, idle pistol, and pistol reload. Um, we're going to make one more um, specifically for the, the, the pistol to show the, uh, the animation of the pistol itself. Um, next, we, let's go ahead and just create the actual weapon blueprint. Weapon rigged. Spot pistol. Actually, we need to go in here and create the actual blueprint. And we're going to call this Grok BP, so we know that this is the actual blueprint for it. Then we can go back to Weapons Rigged, select the pistol, and add component, and we're going to call this Pistol. Alright, so we don't have to worry about changing anything else on that right now. Um, we are going to change a few things, add some, some mechanisms in here um, on Event Begin Play. We don't need anything right now. So let's clear this. I'm going to go ahead and make a custom event. Thank you. And fire pistol. Don't need to do anything on replication on that. And then we're going to create another one. Custom event, drop magazine. And I'm just going to stack these in here and actually build them here in just a few minutes. Then custom shell eject. Alright, so what we're going to end up with is in the firing one, we're going to run the animation that we're going to build and should be able to call the we'll, we'll create some animation notifies that'll actually go into the animation blueprint call them so that whenever we fire the pistol um, maybe um, maybe yeah we'll, 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 we'll cross that bridge here in just a few minutes so we're gonna have these events here in the the actual pistol blueprint that we're gonna be able to call these um, the next thing I want to do is go ahead and go to my skeleton for my player, and I'm going to tell it to use a 
specific animation, and idle pistol. And I'm going to fix the animation here later. The hand position's off a little bit, and I can fix that to where it's a little bit better in the actual animation. It's not a big deal. So I'm going to go to skeleton, and I'm going to select the hand R, add a socket. I'm going to rename that to main hand, which is what I always call mine. And then I'm going to right click, add a preview asset, and then SWAT for SWAT pistol. Uh, do, 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 right there. No, damn it. That was a magazine. Well, that one. All right, so. Start getting it in position. I'm going to get it pretty close. I'm not going to be spending a whole lot of time being 110% perfect. I'm going to undo my snapping for my rotation, make it a little easier. Just want to get it pretty close. And we want to line it up with that right hand. The left hand, right hand situation there, I will fix. Call that close enough for now. All right, save, and we need to come down here to the holster and do the same thing. And we're going to use the thigh R. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add a socket. Click on it, hit F2, holster, add preview asset, add the pistol, this is one of the more time consuming damn things you're going to do. Probably should have Turn snapping back on. Probably would have made life a little bit easier if I left snapping on. And adjusted the camera speed. But we'll make do. Yep, that's going to be good. And we'll save that. All right, so now we got those two. We got our pistol blueprint. It's not complete yet, but we have one. Okay, so now we need to go back into our character. And since we are going to be armed, let's go to our viewport, go to our mesh, and let's go ahead and grab our pistol again. Weapons rigged. And we're going to add component, and we're going to just call it pistol. Because later on, since there's two pistols in here, we want to be able to change the skeletal mesh to suit what we're actually using. And we're going to socket this to holster. So that'll put it in his holster, nice and neat. So now, as we're walking around, we actually have the pistol in our holster. So when we do our number one key for now to draw our weapon, 
and aim, then we need to make it disappear and appear in the player's hands. So let's go ahead and find us a clear spot. And we're going to need a couple uh, variables. Um, pistol equipped. And it doesn't really need to be replicated, but, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, the first thing we need to do is create a custom event and client draw pistol and we're going to go ahead and make that multicast and reliable and then we're going to actually build the functionality here in just a minute but we do need to um, set that to true pistol equipped to true so for right now that's what we need to do and I'm just going to go ahead and and short change this one so we're going to do another custom event and we're going to call this draw pistol and we'll go ahead and make this to be run on server reliable and then we're going to do switch has authority respect my authority so I'm going to move a little bit quick here so um, so then we're going to do client draw pistol so we're actually going to we need to do a second setup also so we're going to draw our pistol and we're going to we need to do a hide pistol as well so custom event client hide or holster pistol and again run on server sorry multicast and reliable and we're going to do basically the same thing that needs to be checked So we're going to say no, we don't have it anymore, so that we can cycle our animation. Is basically all I'm doing right now is just setting up this to cycle the animation. And then we'll do um, custom event, holster, pistol. And again, this is going to be run on server and reliable. Then for right now, let's go ahead and drag these down because I'm going to need some more room here in just a minute. Switch has a Thorta. And client holster pistol. All right, so client draw pistol, server draw pistol, client, server. That's run on server reliable, multicast reliable. Run on the server, and then we're going to do keyboard one is going to be our, our draw pistol. And we are going to draw pistol. And we need to actually do a flip flop. Throw that in there. And then from here, we are going to holster pistol. Now, this isn't going to do anything just yet. Um, what we can actually do for now is grab a reference to our pistol. When we draw the pistol, we are going to set visibility to faults. So we're just going to hide the pistol when we hit the number one key. So it's gone. And then when we um, holster our pistol for right now, we're going to get our pistol set visibility. To true. change the timing here in just a minute. So we hit number one key, pistol goes away, hit it again, it comes back. 
Um, next thing we want to do is go into our animation blueprint. And we need to... Ah, oh, shit. I was going to clean this up before I started the stream. You guys know how I am with these frickin' blueprints. Alright, so we've got our try get pawn on our... Um, this is all of our jump stuff. I uh, just, I have to clean this up because it will bug me to no frickin' end. I, I have to do it. It's like stupid OCD. So we'll do compile and save. Then we're going to go ahead and create a new variable here and use pistol compost save. We're going to go ahead and get a reference to our player character. We get our try get pawn owner and shove it right into the object. In the end, we're going to run a sequence because we're probably going to want to do more things later on. So first thing we want to do is get from here get pistol equipped. And when we get that, we want to set a branch node. So we want to know if it is equipped or not. Um, you do have to do it this way instead of just plugging it directly into a set node here. Um, it just, for some reason, doesn't work. Get over there. Now, we have created that condition for this. Now we can go into the anim graph and from I will run I'm going to drag out from here and add a new state and equip pistol. And what we're going to do here is first off let's go ahead and go back to this to be able to use that pistol, we just need to drag that in here, and then go back to here, draw a line back. We will fill that in here in just a Well, actually, no. For this case, we can actually do the same. Plug it in, but we don't want it to be true here, so we want to run a not boolean. So just not B and hit enter, and you'll get your not boolean. And then plug that in. So now, when we're actually using the pistol, uh, I want to run a blend space for this, or a blend, so we'll do a layer. Just type in the word layered, and it's the only option you're going to get. So from here, let's go ahead and grab our third person I will run blend space, and just plug that into the top, and then grab our speed, chuck that in there. And then here we want to do our idle pistol. Plug that in there and come back to our layered blend per bone. Click on your layered setup. Open up your play with your member right here. And then your array element. Click on that. Open that up. And then where it says none, type in spine underscore zero one. Hit tab, hit one, hit tab, we're good. So again, we're spine one and blend depth one. So what this is going to do is blend the two animations together. So the lower half of my body is doing this, and the upper half of my body is doing that. So that should... If I now... There we go. So now we can run around and have our, our pistol drawn, and then we hit one again, it goes back to our normal animation. So now we're ready to actually spawn in the pistol. So we can close our animation blueprint for now. So in our draw pistol, or client draw pistol, here's where we're going to go ahead and spawn actor 
from class. And now the class that we want to use is going to be our Grok Blueprint, not our pickup, but our regular Blueprint, and we need to tell it where to go. So I'm going to get a reference to my mesh, and then I'm going to get socket transform and do, 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 get socket transform and plug that in and actually going to type in right here main hand that's the name of the socket that I created and then we're going to go from here attach to component and type in again main hand we're going to do snap to target on all three of these guys and we are needing another mesh reference here and plug that into here. So now we have spawned in the pistol, we've put it in our hands, and another thing we need to definitely do, let's go ahead and just drag out for now, let's drag out from the return value and promote to variable and equipped pistol and then make sure we plug it in across the board here now I want you to go through that because we're going to need that variable here in just a few minutes to actually get rid of the pistol so we've created a pistol we got it we're good and then when we actually go over here to holter the pistol we're telling it to set the visibility here but before we actually do that and we'll we'll create some timing here and just if we get time for the timing grab our equipped pistol reference and we want to destroy actor so when we we're holter our pistol what we're actually doing is we're destroying the one that's in our hand that we spawned in and we're just turning the visibility on of the one in our holster. So the timing's probably going to be a little bit off. So if I come over here, poof, gun's in my hand, not in my holster. Hit one again, it's in my holster, not in my hand. Position looks like crap, but I'm not worried about that right now. All right, so that's good, but does it replicate? Two new pi. I am going to, as usual, I'm going to drag the server off the screen. So let's go ahead and hit one. No problem. So we can actually take a look here. So you can see the server, he draws, you can see on the client there, it's replicating. If you pay attention to player base and player base one, you can see that, um, that there's an actor spawned attached to it, and then you see deleted actor whenever you go to holster it. So that's good to go. We can go back to one for now. So. Now that we've got our pistol in our hands and we can actually use it, um, we need to create the functionality to be able to fire the pistol. So let's go back to uh, particle effects. And because I know it's screwed up, the Polygon Heist Pack has a known flaw where it, the the emitter just doesn't stop. So you click on required, scroll down to you find emitter loops and hit one, hit tab, save, and then under the musket smoke, click required, one, tab, save, and now it'll just like that. Um, you could tweak it a little bit more if you like. Uh, I've actually go for emitter duration of 0 0.01 
and save. It shortens up the, the actual muzzle blast there. So now we've got a particle effect that we can use. I've already got the sound file already included in here and that is under effects 9mm Q. So we're going to run with that. Let's go to the weapons rigged. We're going to do a couple things here. Um, we're going to find our pistol. And if you look, we got the pistol. It's the life, all right? It's the pistol. Go to create asset. Create animation. Current pose. Now, I'm going to carry this back up here to my character animation armed and I'm going to go ahead and call this Grok Fire and that's going to be my fire animation. It doesn't do anything just yet but we'll get to that in just a minute. Alright, so with this we actually need to go to the skeleton. In the skeleton we're going to need a couple um, things here and I'm going to click on the pistol itself I'm going to right click and add socket, select the socket, hit F2, we're going to call this muzzle, and because I know, go ahead and rotate that with snapping turn on, 90 degrees. Alright, so yeah, you rotate it 90 degrees because it's wrong. Um, just trust me on that. It's a UE4 thing. And we need to put this directly in front of the muzzle. If you want to get fancy and add the silencer on, then you could add a second one in, like SD m muzzle or whatever else. But this is just where we're going to spawn the particle effect. Now the next thing we want to do is click on this again and we're going to go ahead and right click, add socket, select it, hit F2, magazine, because it's not a damn clip. So with the magazine selected we're going to drop this down to just below it. And that should be good. And then I'm going to do one more. Add socket. And F2 ejection port. And I'm not sure on the direction on this one. May have to rotate it later but we want the ejection port and this is so if we want to we're going to be able to spawn empty shells coming out so we'll do this and this probably have to, to make some corrections to that later alright so we got the magazine the muzzle and the ejection port those are going to be key for later on so make sure we hit save on that and then um, let's go back to our pistol animation. This is where the fun comes in. Alright, so we got nothing. We got zero frames. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pause and scrub it back to zero. I'm going to right click here, insert frame after zero. And I'm going to do that after one, after two, after three, after four, and after five. So we have six frames, okay? We're going to hit apply, and then click on the skeleton, and I'm going to uh, select the slide. Alright, so if we hit play, it's not going to do anything. It, we haven't done anything in the animation just yet. So, with it scrubbed back to zero and the slide selected, we're going to hit key and apply. 
Okay, so now on frame three, what I want to do is I want to drag this to frame three as close to center as possible. Select this, and we're going to drag the slide back. Okay, and at this point, we're going to hit key and apply. And then we're going to drag this all the way to the end, and we're going to drag this back. And key and apply. So now we've got a slide that, that cycles back and forth. It's going to look like crap right now because it's, you know, it's looping. Now, another thing I want to do here is just after I start this animation, right about here, we'll say, come up here and right click, add notify, play sound. Okay, then I'm going to hit the plus key right here, and at the same spot, I'm going to right click, add notify, play particle effect, and we're going to hit save. So now, what's going to happen is when we get to this part right here, it's going to fire off the sound and the particle effect. Um, but I also want to do one more at 3, and I'm going to go ahead and hit plus, and I'm going to do add notify, new notify, eject shell. Now, we have three notifies that we can work with now. In theory, we could give this an animation um, blueprint if we want to. Um, so now we're on the animation and we've got the slide cycling. And we can just manually scrub back and forth. So it's only six frames, so it's going to be relatively quick. You know, and that's fine. So let's go back to our pistol blueprint and weapons folder and fire pistol. Let's go ahead and drag this up here and. When we fire the pistol, this is what we want to do. Um, first off, let me see. I can't remember if I can grab. Um, not sure if it'll let me grab the notify. No, nah, well, let me drag notify in from here. So we can actually do the. Um, Play animation. May actually go back and just create an animation blueprint for this. Might not be a bad thing. So we play the animation. Bang, bang. Alright, so that's that. We're going to, first off, we're going to play the animation. Um, go back into our player really quickly. And inside our player, and all this, we're probably not going to be done with that just yet, so let's just find another clear space to work with here. We're going to custom event, client, fire pistol. Alright, from that client fire pistol, I'm just going to run it as a multicast reliable. And then what we're going to do here is get our equipped pistol reference. And cast to our, our pistol blueprint. And connect that in there. And fire pistol. From here, fire pistol. Run that right there. So the next thing you want to do is I'm just going to go ahead and do a custom event and fire pistol. And we need to make sure that's going to be run on server. Switch has authority. So we have authority to do this, and we are going to client fire pistol. So 
So if we go into our character, draw our pistol. Actually, we need to finish doing what you're doing, dumbass. It's going to tell you that um, you don't need it, but you do. Anyway, so um, let's do left mouse button. And we are going to get a branch node. Because we need to know if the pistol is equipped. And then if it is, we are going to fire pistol. No, you ass clown. I said fire pistol, not clan fire. Pistol equipped. Draw the pistol. We're setting pistol is equipped. And okay, we should be good here. Should be, but you know, I've been known to make mistakes before. Alright, so draw a pistol and left mouse button. Why aren't you doing anything? Um, fire pistol, fire pistol. You're supposed to be playing in. Oh, because I didn't put the frickin' animation in, you dumbass. Alright, draw a pistol fire. So, you can see we got our slide moving now. Every time we fire, our slide moves. So we need some sound, and we need a particle effect. Um, probably not going to use the um, the animation notifiers just yet. Um, but we can come back in here and actually get socket location. And it will be the muzzle. We're going to spawn emitter at location. And the emitter we want to use is a fixed gunshot at our location. We can set our scale if we need to. Um, the next thing we want to do is play sound at location. And Again, I've already configured the sound to actually have a um, uh, sound attenuation applied to it. So now, draw a pistol. Can't fire because the gun's in our holster. So we got a custom animation, got a fixed muzzle blast, which is kind of big. Um, that's what she said. Change the scale, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, and 0.25. Quarter size it. It's all being done in the, the pistol. A little more realistic for, for the pistol to shoot. Custom animation, but does it work with replication? Did he actually do something right for once? All right, get out of each other. So while we're looking at the client, I'll go ahead and do the um, host. Shows up just fine. Now let's go ahead and just Clint. Oh no, it works. Alright, so I want empty shell casings to come out. So when we draw our pistol and fire, I want to kick out the empty shell case. And whenever I do, a, I want to do a magazine reload, and I want to see a magazine hit the ground whenever I hit the, the, the reload button. So let's do the next thing here. Shooting is working. Again, find another clear space to work with. And I'm going to do custom event. And client reload. 
drag you here. You're going to be multicast reliable. And we're going to have a variable reload. Reload pistol. Because this is mana, mana pistole. And it's going to be. I hate this, but the best way to do this is uh, client start reload. I hate to do this. And I'm sure there's probably a better way. So, client start reload, that's all we need. Um, then we'll do custom client stop reload uh, multicast reliable because we have to activate and then deactivate no, not on this this video um, do help request um, through discord um, I'm just I'm running through rather quickly here on setting up these weapons and stuff so we're going to do this, and do this, and uncheck that, and give a call. But yeah, I don't normally mind helping people out, but um, this stream is specifically for doing this. Actually, just going to go ahead and drag these down. And then I'm going to do another custom event, and this is going to be um, start pistol reload. Sadly, I need to put pistol in here as well. All right, so we know everything. Stop. Well, hang around. You might learn something cool here. This could be run on server reliable. So start pistol reload, and we're gonna do switch as authorita. I'm sorry, I can't help but say it the way um, Cartman says it from South Park. Respect my authorita. Oh, okay, so client start pistol reload. I, I I will figure out a better way of doing this, so there's less custom events. But custom events are awesome. Um, stop pistol reload. Because we have to turn this variable on and then immediately right back off again. Um, so to authority and client stop pistol reload. Okay, so and then naturally come back over here. Keyboard R. When I press keyboard R, I need to, on press, start, the hell is it, start pistol reload. And, gonna be weird, but on release, we're going to stop pistol reload. So we're just gonna hit. We're gonna smash the key and, and not worry about it. We're not holding down on it, you know. Plus the animation's gonna loop. Um, later on, I'd come back in here and add delay in here, so you can't just sit there and and spam the freaking reload key. Plus, we penalize the player for spamming the uh, the key anyway, because every time you hit the R to reload, you lose your your magazine, whether it had ammo in it or not your problem, not mine. Um, Alright, so in the hall, same basic principle. Well, we're going to do this off of our equip pistol. So we know that we have our pistol equipped, and we're going to work off of that. Since we already have this here as well, we're going to come off of here and add a branch node. And we need to know if is we don't need to know if the pistol is equipped or not. 
Um, we just need to know reload and we can plug this one directly into there and that'll be fine and then new variable reload pistol and actually we don't need we don't need the branch as far as I remember um, we can set that plug that in there and then plug that in there. I believe that should work. Um, if not, I can come back to it. I'm old, I can't remember everything. Alright, so from here, we have the pistol equipped. We, we don't want to do it from idle run or while we're jumping or anything else. So we're going to do this. Reload pistol. And a little bit different. We're going to go in here and reload pistol. Bam. Done. And then come back to here and same thing we did before. We need to layered. Again, it's the only one that's going to come up when you type in the full word of layered. Get a third person uh, blend space. Plug it in there. Go to speed plug it in there and we want our reload pistol animation here plug that in so again the bottom half is of our body is doing that top half of our body is going to do that so go to our layer here click on the plus open it up open thank you and again spine underscore zero one and blend depth one and then to get back from finishing this right here to our regular idle pistol um, what I'm going to do is go in here and I am going to type in time remaining ratio reload pistol so we want to know how much time is left in our if if we get to a certain point here, if our our time or the ratio of time left is less than 0.1 percent of the animation cycling, then we can actually go into that transition. So that's how we get in and out of it. It's blended. So if I try to hit reload now, nothing happens. One. There's our reload. All right, so we're good. Now, we have this one right here, which is drop magazine. So, when we're reloading our magazine, what we're wanting to do is we want to, well, spawn actor from class. But, pickups, we need a blueprint to actually call for that. So let's actually go ahead and create in our pickup folder a blueprint actor grok mag drop. And that's fine. This is just going to be a disposable blueprint. Um, we're going to open it up, go to our Weapon rigged, find our magazine, go back to our blueprint, add component, and we're going to call this magazine. And that's delightful. Then we're just going to go in here, compile, save, delete these two, off of our event begin play. We want to set lifespan which is kind of an auto-delete feature. And we're going to set that to three seconds. So after this magazine falls out of the gun, three seconds later, it, it's it gone. So we're done with that. We're done with that. We're going to come back to that. And our drop magazine, we want to spawn actor from class. 
and we're going to use a class for Grok Jock Mag. We want to get a reference to our pistol and we need to get socket location oh no 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 transform because dodo here wants a transform instead of a location so we'll plug in transform we don't need to attach to anything but we do need to know the name of that which was i think i just called it magazine so it's going to spawn that, and actually we do need to go back into our pickles, or drop mag, and we need to ensure that we set um, collision so that it actually has collisions. It's going to need it so that we can set it to simulate physics, so it will just fall. So compile, save, hopefully that should be good enough for that. So in here, we're going to spawn it from there, and it's going to automatically fall out. So when we hit our... Am I going too fast for everybody here? And our client start reload. Let's go ahead and just drag these over. Give us a little bit more room. Like I said, I'm going to do all these videos separately, um, a little bit at a time. We're almost at the hour mark, and we're almost done. We only get one more thing to do after this. Other than actually making the weapon fire, but that's just a line trace. I've seen that a bunch. Um, so we do this. We're going to go ahead and get our equipped pistol reference again. And we're going to... What do we call that custom event? We call that drop magazine. So we can just run that. So this is inside a replicated deal. Um, it should replicate by itself. So, pistol's out. We're firing. We need to reload. There goes our magazine. And all right. So we need to go back into our pistol weapon rigged. Well, if you notice, but the magazine was. No, not muzzle. Magazine. Let's rotate it up by 90. There we go. So we're dropping a mag every time we hit R to reload. So the last thing I'm going to do here is every time I fire, I want an empty shell case to come out of that pistol. So, um... Got we're going to leave this open because we're probably going to have to fix the ejection port. Um, let's go back to our fire pistol. Yeah, these are getting kind of bunched up here. All right, so fire pistol. We're fire, client fire pistol. We're on our fire pistol. Um... You know, we can just go ahead and finish it off with our shell eject here. Um, and what we're going to do again is essentially this. I mean, how I can go ahead and control C and control V, paste this in here, but we need to make another blueprint. It's kind of wasteful, pointless, but it's a nice little touch. Um, we're actually going to be using that guy. So let's go back in here to our pickup folder. Blueprint class, actor, um, empty, nine miller. Close enough for government work. So go back in here. Go to our weapons. Click on our static mesh. Select static mesh. It's already there. Case. And again, we need to go ahead and block all dynamic already. 
but simulate physics. So now when we're in here, we can actually change this to MT nine millimeter and change the thing here, ejection port. Copy selected socket and go in here. God, you suck ass. That used to work just fine for copying the name, but no, they couldn't let it ride. So it's e ejection port. Correct. Ejection port. Go back in here and we can actually run this custom event. Shell eject. I mean, I could have just built it in here, but I'm going to change it around a little bit more later. So, every time I fire. I know you guys can't see them, but they're, they're actually hitting the ground. You know what? Let's do something a little bit differently on our empty shell casing. Let's add a component. Projectile movement. And let's actually make it... Where the hell is speed? Speed's up here. Initial speed... Uh, may or may not be cool. Um, depending on... Yeah, I can see it piling up on the ground. Um, the other thing we need to do here is go into our event begin play and... Set lifespan, and let's let them live for two seconds. And I'm going to try rotating it 90 degrees on the ejection port, see what happens with the... Uh, Can't really see which way they're flying. Such a small shell casing. I mean, probably not enough oomph on the uh, projectile movement. Um, let's give it fifteen hundred, just a little bit more juice, and I'm thinking that we're still probably going to have to. Rotate it a little bit more. Alright, so... so I can't see which way the frickin' thing is, is coming out. <laughs> I hate to keep going 90 degrees each time because I'm sure it's the uh, velocity. Alright, now I think it's kicking to the left. Just in case it's actually hitting, I'm going to move it out just a little bit. But we got a pistol that we can draw. We can fire. Custom animations. Uh, something else I can do here. Projectile movement. Um, 0.5. Change the gravity just a little bit. That might help.
Oh well. So dropping shell cases as we're firing. We got animations. Go to reload. We drop mags. That's awesome, right? Cool, cool. Um, let's check our replication. Let's close you. Close you. Close you. Close you. And let's bring in a second player. All right, here's our client. We can see the mag dump. I can see the shell cases on the ground. Let's walk inside so we can see it on the carpet. And we'll go back over here to server. Draw, fire, reload. Lovely. Oh, knocked it out in an hour. How's that? Not perfect. Needs a little tweaking here and there for the, uh, the shell casings to eject the um, the hand position of the um, the gun in the hand. Uh, let's go back to one. So we've got the pistol out. Probably go ahead and fix that animation right now. Go to armed idle pistol. Pause the animation. I said pause. Thank you. Go back to number one. Yeah, and then in an hour's time we went from you know nothing to having ooh, wrong one. having it to where um uh, I do my damn snapping. Let's move our hand position to right there. Looks a little bit more natural. And then we'll hit key and apply. That's better. Let's look at our pistol reload. Pause. Drag back. So we've created our own custom animation for the pistol in firing. Um, GW, key, and apply. And now that should work. Hit save. Animation's fixed. So yeah, I mean, in one hour's time, we went from nothing to having a pistol in our holster, and then being able to draw it out and putting it back into our holster with full multiplayer replication. And then we can fire, custom animation. We got shell casings to come out. We got um, muzzle flash that works. All that's replicating magazine change. You see the magazine hit the ground. It disappears after a couple seconds. Get the shell casings again. You guys can't see too well, but they're there, I promise. You can see them hit the ground, and they vanish after two seconds. So, good stuff, eh? I set up a shooter on this map once before, just for shits and grins, and four of us got in here playing on this map, and we had a frickin' ball. Um, actually, I uh, took the glass out from the, the ceiling, and um, whenever I was setting up the map, you guys know how I am, I like Easter eggs and hiding things, I actually created an elevator back here in the back. The only way to get here is to walk all the way around. Even though, yes, there is a back door right here that I could open up. But I didn't. It makes you have to walk all the way around. But as soon as you step on the elevator, it takes you straight up to the top floor. And then I had a series of things, you know, like boards and whatnot to get you up here. So you could see through these windows and shoot through them. And uh, let's right-click, play from here. 
So you can sit here and, and stand on top of these cross sections, look down and shoot. It's funny as hell. People are getting shot. They're like, where the hell am I getting shot from? Bastards. I couldn't resist myself with the patrol car. Made the lights work. And a little squelch noise whenever you get next to it. Alright. That or that. And I don't know if anybody caught the... Um, the I'm going to go ahead and save all this right now. Um, because I'm going to keep keep working with this one. I'm going to also be doing a, um, a series of separate videos on this. But last night I for some reason thought the last night was Friday night and I decided I was going to stream and then I did another stream later on and it's like what the hell um, so what happens when you get old but I'll load up this project right here and of course you know still on Windows 7 so I'm still having a freaking issues where I can't freaking compile my shit sometimes so let's actually minimize this one Dismiss. Maps. Actually, no, let's go back to the main menu. Ignore what you see. You see nothing. You see nothing. So, play it in standalone game. So, custom splash screen. And it doesn't matter if it goes single player or multiplayer, it all works. But. Yeah, I just in a short amount of time just whip this together. Um, and you can change your view. Fire torpedoes. You have a about a one second delay. Computer itself is only a couple years old. It's um, AMD FX 8350 Black Edition. I shoot it one more time, that'll make it die and my own custom animations that I put together for its death animation. Rolls over, and then... Bloop. Sinks. Hey, custom animations. So yeah, it's, um... Never did finish upgrading the, the RAM. I only got 16 gigs of RAM right now. Cool little torpedoes, torpedo impact, um... Particle effects, custom animations. Yeah, I thought it was awesome for a short build. Um, when I initially built this system, it was built around Windows 7 um, because I like Windows 7. You know, there's no point in upgrading to, or I, I call it downgrading to Windows 10. But, damn it, sink. There you go. I like my animation for my death animation here. Um, uh, video card is GTX 1060 6 gig. It's listed as being the super clocked edition. Um, the CPU kicks out a steady 4.0 gigahertz. Um. I don't remember. I'll actually have to look to see what... Cause you always want to match your, your RAM. Uh, but it probably less than 100 bucks to, to upgrade to RAM. I need to quit being lazy and actually go ahead and, and downgrade to Windows 10. I've got the flash drive ready. I've got the uh, my OECD for Windows 7. Um, the flash drive's already got uh, Windows 10 installed on it. So I can I can still do the free upgrade from Windows 7 to Windows 10. Once I do that, then we'll we'll see how things go. But things are just breaking right now because I'm still using Windows 7. And Microsoft decided they were going to troll people who are still using Windows 7 and make shit start breaking. Right now, if I try to run the um, the tool for downloading and setting up the flash drive to install Windows 10 uh, it will fail and it will tell me that I need to 
restart my computer and try running it again. Okay, I'll restart my computer and try again. Well, you got to try to restart your computer, and guess what? You get an error message saying you are not authorized to um, to restart. In fact, I'll do it here in just a minute. I've only got a couple more ships to sink here. This was about a one-hour build last night, too, by the way. The animations, the, uh, the characters, uh, the bots, you know. Of course, the bots don't move or anything. And there's no more left. I don't like the, the movement. That looks so tacky. So, let's sink that last ship. So we can sink the last ship. Victory! All ships sunk. And then... Dun 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 dun! Back to the main menu. Okay, it's tacky. I never said it was a good game, but that was about a one-hour build last night. So yeah, if I try to shut down my computer, or restart... You don't have permission to shut down and restart this computer. Really? Really? And I, I, and I, I, I try to get people's opinions on how to, to help me with this problem, and... I, I don't want to be rude whenever they start saying the usual things. And I, I, I try not to be that the grumpy old fart and say, Boy, I've been using computers since before you were born. This is something totally new, you know. This is Microsoft trolling people who are using Windows 7. You're like, hey, kiss my ass. We're going to troll you until you actually have to go and spend money to get somebody else to install Windows 10 for your ass. No, I'm smarter than they are. Um, nope. And that's one of the things that people are always going to point out. Do you have to go under admin or try running it as admin? <sighs> I'm the only person that uses this computer. Why in the hell would I have myself not listed as admin? Okay, and on top of that, um, user access control screws up a lot of crap anyway. So I've had that disabled ever since I installed Windows on this computer. <laughs> you know, it was a pointless thing. So I never use user access control because there's no other users that use this. I don't need it. But you don't have permission to shut down and restart this computer. Sorry, well, this computer belongs to me. I can shut this bastard down anytime I want. <laughs> I don't have to purchase. I already have a copy of Windows 7 that I have the, the hard case for right here in front of me on my desk. And it, what's funny, though, is, like I said, whenever you try to run the, um, the, the program to download and configure USB flash drive, little thing I'm tapping on the microphone right there. That's the USB flash drive. Um, I got somebody else to find me a direct link to it and was able to actually get it and write an ISO to the flash drive. So it's all set up ready to go. I just need to, to commit to doing it. And I don't want to because I'm going to lose a couple days of time because I'm going to wipe the drive. I'm going to have to make sure first I archive all of my good projects from UE4. Um, only because and everything has been working perfect. I have no problems with my computer whatsoever until Windows 7 reached the quote-unquote sunset. Whenever they they dropped all support for Windows 7, I don't need your fucking support. I don't need it. I haven't needed it. So my shit works. It works perfectly fine. Until that day came whatever the final cutoff day of no longer being supported Microsoft started pumping out frickin spam or, or shit to your computer to cause problems like you just saw I, it won't even let me restart my computer I can hit control alt and delete and click on the little red button down there and and do that I, I have ways I can restart it and actually restart the computer not just doing a cold reboot or pulling the power plug. I have other ways of doing it. 
I are smarter than they, they give me credit for. But my computer was working perfectly for everything that I needed until they decided they were going to start being assholes and trolling me. They didn't say, let's troll Beefalo Bart. No, they, they're trolling anybody and everybody who's using Windows 7 right now, whether you know it or not. I had Windows updates turned off. It got turned back on again. Um, also because I, you have to use Visual Studios to, um, to compile projects. You know, if I go on right now and try to package this project, it's going to fail. And I have to jump, well, it may not. I, I've, I've done a few things and restarted, so I'll try later on. But I um, would like to um, get the submarine one packaged up later. And I'll cover doing some line tracing and, and actual shooting stuff. But the main purpose of this video was to cover the um, ooh, minor glitch there. You can actually holster while you're reloading. But to be able to draw and holster a pistol, do the particle effects, do the um, shells coming out, the sound, reload, you drop an uh, empty magazine on the ground, that kind of stuff. Combine that later on with um, doing a magazine count. See, there's a slight downfall whenever you're you're in the pistol equipped mode. If you notice the um, the animation, you actually have to go through, and it looks kind of tacky. But put a pistol away, it goes back. You actually have to go into the animation blueprint and change the jump to where the jump loop allows you to do it. Yeah, just not worth it because you're going to spend so little time jumping. And I actually prefer going into the player character and diminishing the amount of jumping anyway. So go to character movement. Um, jump Z velocity, change that to about half so you're not super jumping you know the jump on the UE4 character you might want to do a little bit more to let you get on top of the patrol car or something like that but as long as you can get on top of a counter that's um, half height you can jump over this counter oh gotta raise it up because you need to be able to jump over that counter Try it at 400. Want it just the bare minimums. So you don't want to have that freaking Olympic super jump. There we go. Not really. Um, you don't need that plug in. I, I've already covered before how to to retarget mixable animations to um, Cindy Studio characters and to the UE4 mannequin. Um, all those dance animations you saw um, on uh, the stream party, yeah, those are are from yeah they're from the um, the mixable site. All the dances are. I mean, I went straight to Mixmo and, and downloaded them and then run them through here. So, i get ready to get out of here. Well past the one hour mark on this, but, um, yeah, I mean, whenever I'm converting them, all you really need to do is make sure that you, um, get the bot and, um, I think I've got one in here that still has the bot in it. Yo, what's going on, man? We'll get ready to bail out of here. Gonna do a final recap again, I guess. But yeah, um, 
I'm, I've had other people mention that before, the, the, the thing from the marketplace, but I've had no problems with retargeting Mixamo animations to the Cindy Studios characters, to the UE4 mannequin, and that kind of stuff. Um, and actually, I, if you guys check the, the free stuff in the, the marketplace, there's some good weapons in there. A um, couple regular characters that you might be interested in, Snake. Um, the military character silver and dark now it, it'll it say that they're they're only for like 421 but I ran them in a project with 423 earlier the weapons are not bad um, these weapons here already come with the animations with the um, the sound and particle effects already attached were they're already attached to the gun so Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, we were just talking about um, retargeting from Mixamo stuff. There was something in the marketplace for it. That, but you guys definitely check the marketplace thing because there's a lot of free stuff that pops up in there. And every time I go in there, there's new stuff that I hadn't seen before. It's like the military character, dark and silver. The military weapons, dark and silver. Those are all free assets in the marketplace. Um there was a prototype character um, yeah the prototype characters you got a male and female characters that are similar to the UE4 mannequin but different so you do have a male and a female version um, those are pretty cool um, plus you also have the prototype weapons They're all, these are also free from the marketplace um, sci-fi weapons dark and silver um, Scan 3D people pack. They're okay. Um, I didn't even retarget the um, the the rigged characters from the scan 3D people pack. All I did was assign skeleton. I changed them from their skeleton to the UE4 mannequin, and they worked. And we just running around with them. It took five minutes, and and I was running around as those. So much cool shit in there. That's free. Going to be looking at the Twitch off and Twitch play, see what I can do with those. Um, there was another one, um, vehicle movement component. It was that one, and there was also um, another one that was for tanks as well. Um, worth checking out. 16 megs. These are actually plugins, so you're installing it to the engine, and it's actually adding the plugin. Um. Yeah, for sure. Check the the free stuff in the um the marketplace. Sci-fi weapons, the quadruped fantasy creatures. Man, there's so many freaking things of scenery and stuff like that. You know, even if you just looked at the um now this one right here, the modular seaside town. Eh, really small map. The stuff looks okay, but it doesn't seem like it's very well optimized. But it could be better, it could be worse. Multi story dungeons, I think, was free. Um, modular sci fi stuff here, those were free. Um, hit up that marketplace, guys. You always got to check that marketplace. You go here, hit free, just hit free, and everything in here is free. I mean, Data Smith, I really haven't played with yet. Fog of War, that would be really good if you're working with a um, a Cinti um, project. <coughs> you got your Fog of War system here. I need to check out this one right here. Target Selection Plugin. The Apocalypse Pack is a little bit buggy. Um, I'll go ahead and load that while I'm talking about these here, but. Yeah, I mean, there's vehicles, there's all kind of cool free stuff in here. Um, and where is he, Puck? Right there. The, the map, you really... Oh, yeah, no problem. Yeah, you know, you can chat with me on Discord, too, anytime about this stuff. The, the map for the Apocalypse Pack is going to be... It's not for the potato computers, I, I promise you. 
I've heard people say that they had problems with the dungeons pack on their computers. I never had any problems with that one. But, holy crap. I get into the APOC and it turned my computer into a potato. They are, um, and I I pick on them all the time, you know, directly. Uh, I, you know, direct DMs. I mean, I, I'm the one that set up their Discord channel, by the way. Um, so I, I pick on the guys all the time. I'm like, dude, seriously? Uh, <laughs> your collisions, man. Uh, one of the first things you can do if you decide to get it, there, there's some really cool shit in the in the APOC. APOC. Um, well, having a good graphics card is is a, a definitely a, a bonus. Um, spend some money on your graphics card. Get better than you can afford if if possible. Freaking awesome map, man! This is really cool map. Um, Damn though, it's it causes my my computer to potato, and like I said, my computer is not really a potato. Well, I appreciate that. Now, I'm gonna be doing like I said, I was doing earlier with my combat nun. You see how jerky it is, even on my computer, and stuff is like floating. I actually went through here and deleted a bunch of actors. There's still 6,500 actors. I deleted close to 1,200 or more actors from this scene. So yeah, there was a lot, a lot of actors in here. Um, one of the things that you'll notice on here, um, I took out all of the... Well, that's... 2070 should be a good card. Um. Yeah, I, I would I would contact who you bought it from. MSI is actually pretty good too. And stand upright. Other than slightly leaning over, what are you talking about there? Um. Oh, you're talking about the, the, the posturing? That's just the um, the third-person animation blueprint, the way it is. You see, I didn't really mess it with uh, the settings on my, my card much. You should go in here to test map. Get out of this thing here. This is a... Oh, this shit I was playing with in here. Yeah, the Cindy characters, why they're, they're, they're hunching over... That's actually because of the third-person animation blueprint. Um, might be able to fix that here in just a second. Let's let these uh, shaders load up. Like I was playing around with some of the uh, material stuff on, like on the cars. I didn't like the fact that they were covered in blood, so I, I was kind of screwing around with some of that, trying to get some of the blood off the, the vehicles. And I was actually going to set up the uh, the wheelchair, the socket the player to the wheelchair, and be able to drive the wheelchair around. Yeah, I kind of get bored one day. Um, so yeah, the the posturing, how they're they're leaning over like that, that's just the third person animation blueprint. Because uh, when you retarget them, that's just the way that UE4 mannequin stands. That's his posture. Yeah, I, but they you know they they look good overall. I mean, go to your animations, go to um, uh, third person idle. So you see how the the posture is on the back? Let's hit pause. Make sure we're at zero. Spine one. Key apply. Move it back one. Key apply. Still the head down just a wee bit. And then key apply and now it's a little bit better. Save, go in here. Yep, 
yeah, it's a little bit too much of uh, too much back. I should have turned to my snapping off and done about half that, but but you know, it's still just by rotating your spine back, your spine one back a little bit, it kind of straightened out the arc a little bit. You could always change the arms. As you can see when you're running, though, she's you, you know, your characters lean over so freaking much whenever they, they run. So if you want to get rid of that lean also, because he, just doing what I just did, um, took out that hunchback of Notre Dame look there, but running, still kind of leaning a little bit too far for my likings. So just like I did with third person idle, go shoot, um, third person run, we'll hit pause, drag it back to zero. Try that again with try it with spine one key apply. Let's bring it back a little bit. Want a little bit of lean while she's running, but we'll do key apply. That's better. Save it and Still leaning a little bit, but not near as much. But you can do little tweaks like that. I mean, that's easy stuff. So, like, you know, the the too far of lean. Yeah. But I mean, the the stuff that's in the apocalypse pack is really really cool shit. Um, the one thing you're going to have to look at is the overgrowth. All this stuff right here. If you look at the collisions, simple. I've deleted the collisions off a lot of these things. Um, but the collisions were just this freaking huge box collision. And you couldn't get in the damn buildings. <laughs> All the buildings were locked up. Because the damn um, collisions were screwed up. But there is a lot of cool shit in here. I just noticed something. This cafe. I'm not going to leave it in here. But this cafe here is actually the same one from their website and their free stuff on the Cindy Studios website. They have a free stuff section and that cafe is in there. So if you want that cafe, you can get that free. Um, I mean, all the buildings are freaking cool. The nuclear power plant, the crane stuff. I mean, I'm I'm tempted to actually load this this pack into other ones. I that would be cool in the town. You know, a, a sign for a diner. I mean. You got all the stools and stuff like that, and the the booth seats and everything. Um, she's got a helipad. I mean, it's really really cool shit in here. The modular building pieces, even if you want complete or rebel. I mean, oh, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. And yeah, this is just the the wind down time. This is forty minutes over past whenever I was actually done um, with this video. But yeah, there there is some really, really cool stuff that's in the Apocalypse Pack. I mean, it's expensive, but, you know, just looking at the buildings is cool. You look at the characters, I mean, hell, there's zombies and there's a patient press character, like male a riot cop. So if you want an ulterior version of the uh, the SWAT guy from the heist pack, this is pretty much the same guy with a different head. A little bit of blood on him. Um, the nun, that's what I'm running around as. Homeless guy, soldiers, male and female. I mean, some pretty cool characters. But you also have corpses. 
you know, different degrees of decay. Um, character attachments. Got knee pads, armor pieces, a lovely pink backpack, regular backpacks, canteen, beard, different types of hair, <laughs> spiky things for armor, um, knives, mags, radios. I mean, it's, it, it's cool. Environmental stuff. Uh, oh yeah, the um, the interstate. Let me let me load the the map back up. It's it is a chunky map, but it's don't save. Nothing for you to save. Shut up. Go away. Um, got the mobile home park, the nuclear power plant, the whew, wow. Um. These fortifications over here with corpses impaled on spikes, you know. Tires, suspended thing here from the crane. The fact that it has a crane. The um, the interstate system, of course, is all raggy and torn up. But unless they had it in here as completed without being torn up, I know it's apocalypse. It's supposed to be everything tore up. Crashed helicopter. It's a news helicopter. Who cares? Um, yeah, all these buildings though are enterable. So if you're here and you wanted to take your stairs and go up, these stairs will take you all the way to the frickin' rooftop. That's where you exit right there onto the roof. So if you want to build a hell of a damn, if your computer's good enough, um, hell of a sniper map. Sit there and snipe all the way across there. There's a container ship. Again, tempted to like just load this into other projects just for the other stuff. Like, hell, I'd like to have this ship, the lighthouse. So put this into the submarine game and have another ship that I can sink. Um, can also set it to where this is the container ship and you've got to escort it from point A to point B. Um, but I needed stuff like the lighthouse and the mountains in the background, that kind of stuff, to set up for the terrain. Yeah, I don't think I've even been over here. Got a ladder going all the way up. Yeah, I mean, that's cool. I like it. But this this map right here has just got way too much going on. Um, I don't know what else to do to kind of streamline it. That I've got rid of all of the um, the hang moss and stuff like that. I just don't know what else I can do to to, to clean this up. Yeah, I haven't done any Android type stuff in quite some time. Um, I want to start doing some um, some other challenge stuff like this for you guys. Uh, did this one the one hour? Um, I think this one, did I do the? I'm getting old. I'm forgetting shit. This is the one I think I did yesterday. Um, building a game in an hour. Take one hour time and build a game from start to finish. And yeah, doing touch controls um, is partially in the um, the player blueprints. Um, Gamepad. Um, what the hell was it? Uh, there was. You know, I think it's actually in the first person character. I think it has touch controls in it. Um, I just, I haven't really been interested in, in, in the Android stuff. You guys are going to really have to 
smacked me around a little bit to get me inter interested in that because you need to have um, uh, an emulator for testing um, so you have to be able to, to to be able to write it and then oh god the software that I used to use was a pain in the ass and the the apps that I was making back then were crap you know I'm not saying that the stuff that I'm making now is not crap but I'm just saying I didn't have Unreal Engine 4 back then. Back in the Stone Age. In fact, let's see here. Spawn projectile. Stick input. Um, no. The controls whenever you do like I'm just gonna do keyboard yeah whatever D um, because I can just click on it and actually come back up here for the input key if you look Android back volume up volume down menu really is that all you got to offer um touch 1 through 10 I would assume motion I think would actually be cool um, so if you're doing some kind of driving game you want to be able to turn your phone like it's a steering wheel but you know but then you're trying to, to look at your screen at the same time but gesture that's more VR Xbox one uh, like I care about that um, Steam controller PS4 Xbox one um, advanced inventory I just I never really get excited about inventory um, the advanced inventory advanced inventory um, do I have that <laughs> I got so many frickin assets um, ancient treasure. Advanced locomotion. Advanced village. Advanced class. Um, don't, don't have it. Um, let's see. Let's actually go here to free and inventory. There is inventory pro, inventory system. I have. Um, another inventory system. Survival inventory. That's part of a survival game kit. I know they had that separately. Um, RPG inventory. Multiplayer inventory system. Huh. Interesting. That might be of interest to somebody I know. Customizable inventory system. It's Ten bucks. Um, adventures. One hundred and fifty dollar. Touch, build, and inventory. It was one of these that I that was um, free a while back. And I, I swear I thought I had it. I mean, I've got action RPG inventory system. But I swear I thought there was another one that I had picked up. Action RPG. Yeah, there is another... There is a free one that was on this here on the marketplace and it's not that one it's a different one but I will probably take a look back at this one it would be nice to have an inventory system but I just haven't needed it yet and 
yeah, I know that's kind of selfish. Well, I'm, you know, I don't care what you want. I don't need it. You know, not trying to sound like that, but you know, I just it hasn't come up as a, oh, I really need to to focus in on that for a while. Um, I've been trying to relearn some other things first, like improving the weapon systems first, with better replication. RPD um, snap in inventory. Inventory for Battle Royale. Yeah, that's that's the one that I've got. Inventory system from. Um, Nikita, that one I actually paid for. But you know what, though? Um, even though it's not multiplayer, it's um, it was relatively inexpensive. Yeah, see that that one I got, um, and I I really haven't done anything with it. Um, kind of play around with it a little bit here and there, but and it's not bad, but. The FPS starter kit. Um, do, 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 do. Um, yeah, FPS game starter kit. Mm, let's see, FPS game, not aim, game. You dipshit. You're right here. Thirty bucks. It's by SB. Um, worth looking into. Um, it's got a bunch of different weapons already in it. Um, it is single player, but it is adaptable to multiplayer. Um, most things are. But you have money. You have all kind of other pickups. And boy, it keeps updating things, too. It's got vehicle system already in it, too. Um... Yeah, I mean, custom IK support for weapons. Oh, shit. I, I haven't looked at it in a while, so he added swimming to it. I mean, you got blueprints for elevators, for launcher, for ladders, and yeah, I mean, he's got a lot of stuff already in there. And honestly speaking, you know, since well, you look at the different images that are here, um, <laughs> you got resolution graphics. It's thirty bucks, and if you want to do multiplayer, then it takes a little bit of work to convert it over to multiplayer. But it's definitely worth looking at. I've actually talked to the developer a few times. Nice guy. Of course, SB is my initials also, but you know. But he's got a playable demo you can download showcase video um, but he updates it pretty regular too so it's not like it's a uh, you know it's on the marketplace and just forgotten about but you do have to create a project instead of you know adding it to a project it's the only thing I don't like but yeah the uh, other inventory I said, I've got a lot of stuff I need to focus on before I get started on inventory. Um, there are a bunch of already pre-mades, but the thing is, trying to make other people's shit work with your own, it really can suck. Well, almost even the same, similar font, but same name. Inventory system free, inventory system five bucks. Really? That's not bad for the icons. Update shooting AI. Advanced TPS inventory pack. 
Um, that one might be worth looking at if you're into that style of inventory. You know, the jigsaw puzzle where you got to piece things and move things around. I don't like it, but, you know, some people do. Battle Royale inventory system. Okay, so just use the um, uh, Battle Royale template. You got the airplane um, insertion type. You got um, yeah, mine's screwed up. I got it an earlier version, but and the car they've added in the rocket launcher since I've done it. Um, you get parachute from the airplane. You can also do um, starting on ground. You got the big circle thingy that can zoom in or out. You know, you know collapse in. You got an inventory system. The only thing is their multiplayer, their host and join setup sucks. We never could try to find each other, never could join each other, and never could get that to work correctly. So the concept was, and I kept asking you guys, hey, do you want to see more with this freaking template? And nobody says anything, so... I could put my multiplayer template in this one and be able to, to host and play anytime we want. I've already converted over to Cinti Studios characters. Um, I've already got it set up and running. Um, like I said, I got uh, this one that I called Fart Night. Already, already done it. I just need to change the uh, the menu system around to where um get the hell off my screen. Um, yeah, just change the menu system around a little bit. We just could not get this shit to work correctly. So what's the problem? If I could do it, I'm old and, and shit, so if I can do it, you can do it. Success, you can lose. All right. Oh, shit. Um, exit game. But yeah, I actually had it in two different maps. Um, yeah, if I can do it, you can do it. I never really did get into the finishing out the uh, thing to actually run a dedicated server. I'm not into the Battle Royale games. I never really was. I'm never into the, the Fortnite and all that kind of stuff. So it really didn't spark my interest to actually worry about it. But I would like to do a persistent world combat system where you actually have uh, AI running around. You've got um, constant combat. You have one, well, two main teams, red team, blue team, whatever you want to call them, and they each have one permanent base that can never be captured. And resources-wise, um, if you want to gain resources or whatever the benefit may be, I don't know, I just, there would be outposts throughout the, the region, throughout the map, and you need to go out there and capture those outposts. 
It's kind of like a capture the zone or capture the flag. Not capture the flag, but capture the zone where you capture the thing and then um, you can get a supply line that would actually start going to and from and feeding in supplies. So now if you want to attack the, attack the next outpost, if you've already got the got one, every time you capture a new new location, you can now, if you get killed, you can respawn at that new location. You can get ammo resupply, health resupply, whatever. But if you lose that base, then you you go back to, uh, yeah, it's like a domination style. Um, so that's what I've kind of been considering is that I would do. Um, but it needs to be a dedicated server and hosted online somewhere, whether it's on Amazon or wherever, and actually have a dedicated server. Yeah, well... That would be cool if you could actually use those, um, you know, carrier styles. You can't use those names, but you could build that, just change them up a little bit. You couldn't have, you know, Snake Eyes it would have to be called something else, like um, Snake Pecker or whatever else. <laughs> You'd have to call it something else, you know. You wouldn't be able to use their copyrighted names and shit, but you could do basically... Yeah, it is. Enhanced Vehicle Plug-in. That's what I was looking for. Um, I have no idea what it does, but I've already installed it. Edit your, your review. I haven't made a review. Um, tank Movement Component. Yeah, I mean, you, you could do basically the same concept, except for there's, there's a problem, though. With... Um, G.I. Joe, I, I know this is from the, the cartoons back in the day, but um, nobody ever freaking died. They just shoot somebody down, and they, they fly, fly out of the aircraft, and then suddenly they got a parachute. They're, they're parachuting safely to the ground. Nobody gets hurt. Nobody dies. Unrealistic combat. Kind of like watching the A-Team. They pull up that Mini-14 or... The a Ruger AC-556, whatever you want to call it. And um, dumping 100 rounds out of a 20-round magazine. And not one person gets hit, but they, they shoot the engine block of a, a, a tractor trailer and it blows the engine up or whatever. You know, unrealistic damages and nobody getting hurt. So, yeah. So, looking at the, the persistent world... You run different classes. You can have your snipers and your medic and your, you know, yeah, where they're, they're like five feet away from each other and you see that they're shooting over the dumpster or the garbage can or whatever. Uh, they're fighting back and forth and they're showing that they're like five feet apart. <laughs> Another question though Superman, Man of Steel, he's bulletproof. Earlier, um, in the earlier episodes, you know, back in the good old days, um, Superman standing there, got his chest poked out, and he's all, you know, badass, getting shot at, bullets bouncing off. Well, if the bullets bounce off of him, why the hell did he duck whenever they threw the pistol at him? He just dumped six shots into him, and they all bounced off. But dude throws the pistol at him, and, and Superman ducks to get away from the damn pistol. Really? punk ass <laughs> so but you could have something similar to snake eyes you know you have um, yo what's up everybody just kind of like jumping in here an hour after I wanted to quit the video um, <laughs> the, um, so I'll just load it back up so you guys can see you know the project that I actually did for this um, video an hour ago the hell is it called um Bank heist. So she's just like strolling here an hour late, you know, we're sitting here chit chatting back and forth. Hell, I'll chit chat all freaking night long. I'm, I'm old and have no life. I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, do, 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 maps. So, yeah. Quick recap here. Um, Yeah, see, what you're working on is primarily cinematics. So, 
you just need to get your characters in in the thing. Then yeah, I, I like I said focus in on the um, getting the characters rigged to the UE four mannequin skeleton. So, Blue Slayer, what you missed was um, from scratch in less than an hour's time it went from just cool dude standing here on the map to where we had a pistol on our hip and then we could draw the pistol and holster it. We could fire. We had the um, custom animation for the slide moving. Also, you can notice that there's shell casing on the ground. And we're firing. I don't know if you can see them. Let's go in here. We're Showing a little better here. Yeah, the animation is stupid simple. So the shell case is popping down. And when you do the reload, you drop a magazine on the ground. But unfortunately, we don't. I didn't put the timer in here, so you prevent it from spamming. So you can just sit there and spam your magazines. But in an hour's time, though, I mean, we went from, you know, just a, a rigged character walking around looking cool to um, fully functional pistol. And it's all replicated, too. Um, no, I actually, I think I've got these sounds linked in the Discord channel. If not, remind me and I'll relink re them. Um, the animation, one that I just missed. You see, it is, um, I'm going to be redoing everything that was done in this video in one hour's time. Um, you think one hour of time while streaming is about 30 to 45 minutes of actual work time because you're having to slow down, explain things, and that kind of stuff. Yeah, this is all replicated. Um, so if I come in here, like I said, and do everything in the first hour first hour of this video, which when I get done and I, and I shut up long enough to end the video, um, it'll actually take a little bit of time to process, but all right, you can see the, the client is the one that's jumping. So throw your pistol, shoot, get the MP shell cases, do a reload, and reholster. Everything works. And so, look at it again from client's perspective. Draw the pistol, fire, reload. Get all the animations are replicated, the sounds, the muzzle flash, the reload animations. Draw and holster, everything is replicated, working perfectly. It's the same basic thing. Whether you're drawing a sword or you're drawing the pistol, it's the same process. Um, I'm not even using an animation. Uh, but he's drawing the pistol. I'm not really using an animation here. What I've, I've actually done is, this is the idle pistol animation. This is the third person idle animation. It's just transitioning between the two because I put it in the animation blueprint. That's the only difference. I didn't have to use equip because I freaking hate the the equip pistol one that comes with the animation um, starter pack because it reaches behind your back to pull the pistol out. I don't like it. And yeah, so there is zero animations. The animation is third person idle animation. This is the um, the idle pistol animation. Go back and it's that so there's no actual drawing now if you're just doing like a dagger or something small this would work perfect um, the only difference would be is in your animation blueprint whatever you're doing your transition um, this one just being a quick pistol um, you would actually do an extra one here you would have a quip sword and I could actually do it. It would be easier for me to actually just show it. Um, 
I've got animations. I can prepare a project in relatively short amount of time. And uh, let's see here. Basically, what you're doing is you're telling the animation blueprint to play the draw sword animation. And then it transitions into the the idle animation of holding the sword. And then whenever you're done with the sword, you want to put it back away, you're telling it to put the sword away. Um, it, it's just a matter of running through the... Um, I don't know why I closed that project. Running through the uh, the animation blueprint, it'll replicate easier if it's in the, uh, the thing. Like I said, just... What you have to do is whenever you're setting up this, you're going from idle to run to equipping your sword. You drag off from your output animation, you type in the word layered, and this will be the only thing that will show up when you type in the word layered. So it'll be a layered blend per bone. Again, I covered this in the, in the earlier in the video because I had to do it twice. Um, the top is going to be your the, which doesn't make any sense, but the top of this is the bottom half of your body. The bottom part is the top half of your body. So the top half of my body is doing the idle pistol animation. The bottom half of my body is doing whatever it was doing before. Walking, standing idle, whatever. Um, but to transition out of the pistol, let's look at the uh, reload pistol animation. Same thing. It's blended in with the uh, the regular blend space, but to go into the the um, transition would be draw sword, and that's it. And then to get out of that, you go from draw sword to stand there holding the sword. Cool. You want to use time remaining ratio, and then it'll automatically show you the name of the animation that you were doing beforehand. So this one would be Reload Pistol. So whenever I have less than 0.1 or one tenth of a second left in this animation, I can now transition into my next one. And I, I covered this earlier in the video. but And I've covered this before too, so... You're just using that to actually be your transition basically meaning that once you complete doing this animation right here then you start doing this next animation is what you're saying and you're 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 routing your animation system through this so that you can't go back to your idle animation until you've done doing the animation of drawing your sword out and then you can do your idle animation if you're doing it like sitting in a chair i need to sit down uh, i need to do the sit down animation then I need to come over to here, and I need to do the sit down idle animation. Then I want to get back up. Then I got to go to here, and then here. So, I, yeah, I've covered all this in, in multiple different videos. But I can do um, as long as you've got an animation from drawing the sword from the back or wherever you want it from, whether it's a mixamo animation or whatever else. Get with me on Discord later. I'm, I'm going to get off of here. You know, a lot of talking. This is almost, this is over two hours straight of, of talking after y'all know what I've been through for the last two weeks because of freaking botched dental work. Still not 100%, but better than I have been. So, get with me on Discord. I'll try to throw something together for you, but all this other stuff that was done here in this particular deal I will have um, individual videos and I'm gonna publish individual videos the first one being um, creating the sockets to attaching it to the the player you know or retargeting to get the character and then I'll do another video on you know yeah, I'm still going to be available on Discord. I'm going to take a break for a little bit. I, I still haven't eaten anything since lunch, so I need to eat something. But I'm going to break this down into shorter videos that will be like 10-minute videos at max, 
and I'm going to be uploading them throughout next week. So, like, the first one will be retargeting Cindy Studios characters to the regular um, unarmed animation blueprint so you can run around and, and look cool. And then adding in animations from the animation starter pack or from Mixamo or from wherever, we'll do a retargeting from Mixamo. We'll do a retargeting from am animation, uh, you know, whatever. I'm just going to be breaking up into shorter videos so I can get back into doing some of the how-to videos. Yes, the first hour of this video was all how-to, and it showed how to do all this stuff right here to draw your pistol, shoot, make a custom animation, dump shell casings on the ground, you reload, drop a magazine, do the animation, and all that wonderful jazz. Um, same thing, beef love art. Um, I don't... I, I very rarely go over there, so... Uh, but it's Beefalo Bart on, on, on that. I'll see if I can come up with an actual link, and I'll, I'll put it in uh, Discord. But making very simple animations is... Um, like the, the slide cycling on, on the pistols. Super easy. Um, changing your splash screen. I think that's a cool touch right there. Dismas um, maps. Go back in here and just kind of screw around. But yeah, there's no sound in here. Um, yeah, like the shooting sounds, I got those packed up in a, a RAR file. I use WinRAR for everything. Um, I still want to play around with this more. So you get a little impacts, and there's my custom animation for rolling over, and then there'll be another custom animation right here for sinking. And then the ship's gone. I thought about doing a custom animation for the um, the torpedoes to have the um, the propeller spinning, but as you can see the torpedoes in the water. Still want somebody that's worth a damn with maps, or maps with models to actually take the uh, the ships and tanks from this uh, this pack here. And um, <coughs> rip the turrets off, rip the guns off the turrets, so that um, I can actually rig them up to where the turrets work, and you can shoot the guns. But this was an hour build last night, including the animation. There's actually two custom animations. First one's roll over. Second one is to sink. And it's um has a little you know, it changes the angle. I'll watch it from a distance here. And impact. Come on, hit. There you go. So it rolls over and then it pitches and sinks under. I was so tickled with that cheesy ass little animation system. Still tinker around with um, animation uh, notifies. Good way to set up your, your sounds and stuff like that, but by running it in the um, the weapon blueprints and yes I know John will probably be rolling his eyes at me right now because he's been preaching that forever uh, John Galt um, but you actually shoot you know the trading off some of the stuff between the uh, the blueprint for the weapon versus trying to do everything on the player was pissed off roll the warships you ain't got my damn submarines ready to play yet well, I have to come in here and play with my submarines. Play with myself. Alright, yell, yell, yell at me on Discord. Yeah, see, I 
didn't set my conditions for my animation, so you just keep rolling over until it actually goes away. If I keep shooting it, it'll keep rolling over. But, yeah, whatever. Throw some uh, AI to this, make the, the boats actually move around. So you're actually having to try to shoot the torpedoes and try to get the lead on them and, and that kind of stuff, because there is no crosshair, there's no... I thought about doing when you go from the exterior view to the interior view actually set it up to where you have a periscope um, crosshair system just weirdly satisfying just doing this and then when you take the last of them it, it throws you a little message up on the screen saying hey you killed all of them and kicks your ass back to the main menu <coughs> Damn. All right. I'm going to get out of here. Love you guys, even whenever it's not cold outside. <coughs> Damn, I'm choking myself up. All right, so I'll be on Discord for a little bit, and um, I may or may not do anything productive. I know I'm going to probably play some World of Warships. Uh, just because I need to do my dailies and get my free shit. All right, well, I'll see you guys on Discord. Have a go.